Hello, Internet. Um, this is Ben with, with, again, with another funny update. I don't know. Um, it seems like I don't do many uh, YouTube updates, but when I do, I have something weird, some weird project, right? And, and that is the case this time. Um, so I've been writing a book um, for over a year now. I'm at, I can get the exact stats, like 54,000 words or something like that. Let me, let me check. Let me, you can hear me scrolling. Oh, and I really hope that doesn't shake the, the camera because that will make everyone the most sad. Sorry, that's a super noisy mouse because I also have it off the ground. Yeah, 54,000 words, 6,200 sentences, 65 chapters, and I, I have an estimated amount complete, 87% complete. That's my estimate, and if you believe that estimate is true, then the final word count will be 62,000 words, which is like a book, right? That's bananas. That's crazy. I can't believe I've written so much. Um, and I've seen a lot of things uh, like from a couple different sources, read some things. Um, I got like a book about how you submit a book to an agent and all this stuff, right? A literary agent. Um, and, and just reading other things online, everyone's like, oh my gosh, you have to post about what you're doing, like online, like tell people, tweet about it. I don't know, use the Facebooks. I have a cat who's joining me. Um, we, yep, we can see her tail. I was like, maybe we'll get a look at her, but probably just her tail. Um, and I don't use social media much. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know if it has to do with my age. Like Facebook came out when I was in college um, and it was only for college students at the time. And I wasn't using it because I was like, why would I do this funny thing? Um, but right now it's bananas and huge. And then Twitter has come along and now we have YouTube. Um, so anyway, I don't really use any of those things. And YouTube's kind of included. Um, but as mentioned, right, I've done some YouTube video announcement -y, not even announcements. But yeah, I mean a little bit like Mysterious Space updates and... Um, when I was making any money with Mysterious Space and donating the profits, I kind of talked about that a little. The cat is trying to turn around, which is going to be a mess. Um, so yeah, so I was like, sure, I can do the YouTubes. That, that isn't, you know, most things I've read are like blog about it, but um, I don't know, where would I, I don't know, why would I write even more? Or, or maybe that's a silly thing to say, I'm writing a whole book, I should, why, why not write more? Um, but I just feel like it would take a lot of time, honestly. Um, whereas making a video takes as long as making the video takes. I'm not going to edit it. Uh, what you see is what you get. Um, I had to buy a new uh, webcam for this because the built-in one was horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just like a mess. Uh, so I, I bought a cheaper one. It's $80 in case you're curious. So if this camera looks good to you and you've been curious about uh, putting your own things on YouTube, you can do it for 80 bucks, apparently. And, or unless you think this video quality sucks, in which case you can't. You need to pay more, I guess. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna get the cat off, uh, because it's a little distracting uh, for you and possibly for me. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what I'll do on, with these videos from uh, week to week. I want to post once a week, at least. Uh, maybe I'll do more. It depends on how I, the content. Um, but the question is, do I have the content, right? What would I talk about? Um, my boss at work has published a nonfiction book before. Um, and you know what, I'll link to that in the, in the description, or the doobly-doo, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, uh, and he had a, a tip that I don't know where he got it from. He, he said someone told him, and he told me. Uh, and that was that before you sit down to write every day, or whatever session or whatever, um, to write before you write. Like, just write some nonsense. Write in a, in, a, in a piece of paper or a Word doc or whatever you prefer. Just whatever comes to mind. And I think the idea was kind of just to, to warm up. Like, he, he didn't make this analogy, but, you know, before you work out, you should do a little warm-up, you know, kind of thing, like a physical workout. Um, so I don't know if it's analogous to that in any way. Um, I think what, what he was saying that was helpful for him was just kind of clearing his mind um, of, of whatever nonsense he was thinking about. So whatever, whatever the reason, um, and, and I did that for a while, so I, I could go back, you know, and I wrote them as if I was writing to someone, not knowing who that someone was, like, I don't know, just because that was a voice that made sense to write in. Um, so I don't think I would read those verbatim, that would probably be very boring, but maybe I could find some interesting things in there to, to summarize. Um, and a lot of it isn't even related to the book, it's just like, here's a thing that happened today, or, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, you, you probably don't care, or maybe you would, I don't know, you tell me. Um, but I thought for this video, I would just kind of talk a little about the book and about my process. Uh, I have never written something this big before in, in a lot of ways, which I'll get into. I don't feel qualified to write. Um, so kind of, I don't want to say fully overcoming that, but, but just like, I don't know, like how did I convince myself that this was something I could do? Um, in the hopes that this would be helpful information to, to you, viewer, whoever you may be. Um, so. I don't know what I'm doing, can you tell? Uh, and I have no script. Maybe in the future I'll make scripts for these things. But that seems like a lot of work. Let's not do that. Um, so, yeah, first few things. I've, I've, I've never written um, a lot. Like, I have written in the past. Like, when I was a kid, I wrote some ridiculous, like, totally fantasy D&D-inspired, like, 
thing in middle school or something, right? That was complete garbage, but uh, my stepmom saved it. I don't know why. I, she showed me that once. And I was like, you still have this? <laughs> what? Um, and, uh, and I've written little bits and pieces since then. In high school, I kind of, uh, I thought poetry was fun. Um, uh, especially, like, I like the silly ones, like E. Cummings. I'm sure he would not appreciate, sorry, I'm bumping the table. I'm sure he wouldn't appreciate me saying it was silly. I think he took it very seriously. But it had a very whimsical kind of, I don't know, see, but again, maybe that's not uh, polite. But the use of, of the paper and everything. I like I like those weirder things, basically, right? Like, if you wanted to be, like, serious and express a thought and not rhyme, I was like, who cares? I want something, I want something fun that rhymes and, and uses the page weird and has a tempo and all these things. I don't know. I like that. That appealed to me for whatever reason. Maybe that's lowbrow for, for poets, uh, but, but so be it. Um, uh, so yeah, I did some of that. And, and I also, though, I think where I did a lot more writing than I, I realized I did was in writing for a game. Um, I ran this game called Cypets, which I'll semi-plug. I'm not running it anymore. I gave it away to this other lady to run because um, I got a full-time job. Uh, Cypets, I tried to run full-time, didn't work. But, but anyway, uh, a topic for another time if you're interested. Uh, the point is there's several, I think maybe 2,000, I shouldn't say several, like 2,000 items in the game that I drew the graphics for like every single one over time. It was like a seven years thing that I, that I worked on this for. Um, but I also wrote descriptions for many of the items, not all of them, uh, probably less than half, but it was a lot of descriptions. Um, and I even wrote, uh, as part of that, also I wrote a creation myth, like the, the game is set in this, I don't know, it's a modern day setting, but with a bizarre alternate history, maybe you'd say. Um, and uh, I wrote a creation myth of this alien race or something that may have interacted with, with the Earth, but it's only vaguely... It was just, the game was everything, right? So like any fantasy thing I found, any weird sci-fi idea I found, I was like, oh, Hollow Earth, that's a thing that at one time people believed? Maybe they still do, I don't know, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> hopefully not, I don't know. People believe all kinds of things. Um, but, but I made, uh, like, I was like, okay, Hollow Earth, we can find a funny scientific explanation for, you know, whatever. Um, aliens, therefore, that's scientific. Um, so anyway, so I, I wrote a creation myth. I, I kind of, I read a bunch of, uh, I have some books over here that I could show you. Is that interesting? Will the, will the thing reach? Why not? It's, it's a thing I can show you, right? Sorry, look how unscripted this is. Um, here is, here is mythology pictures. This is a neat book. Here is, oh, I like this one a lot, actually. Oh, and I got this on the bargain. I used to work at Barnes & Noble, so I got, like, tons of, of books on super crazy discount. This was one of them. This is also awesome. It's just, like, you just flip through, and, and there's some, like, amazing thing to read about. Um, and uh, I don't know what else is in here. Creation myths with bookmarks in it, apparently. Receipts probably from Barnes & Noble. How old are those? No, that's something else. I don't know what that is. Anyway, a dictionary of creation myths. So I, I read a bunch of these, and there's a lot of interesting themes. I mean, that's kind of what they do. I don't know if, um, I mean, again, I, I haven't really studied writing like at school. I, I studied computer science, right? I'm a game designer, uh, not professionally, fortunately or unfortunately, hard to tell, but I do a lot of it on, on the side, um, which I'll talk a little more about because that's semi-related to this project, uh, this book. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I mean, people have kind of categorized, looked at all the creation myths and been like, oh, there sure is a lot of creation by rape and incest. Mm, that part's less good. Okay, let's not use that. Oh, there's a lot of creation by uh, God dies and then the universe is, is built from his remains. Oh, okay, that's more interesting. Let's do that. You know, there's a lot of creation where like, I don't know, they, they make a thing, but it, but it betrays them or something. You know, like gods make a cool thing or like some other creature or, or entity, but then they betray them. It's like, okay, cool, that's a cool thing, right? So I took the parts I liked uh, and the part, left out the parts I didn't like. Like, I don't think we needed rape and incest in my creation myth. Um, and, and I wrote a, a creation myth that was very fun to do. So uh, anyway, the point is I, I had done some small amounts of writing before, right? Not 50, 60,000 words, um, but some amount. So. Yeah, and I, I don't think I really appreciated how much practice that really gave me, just writing tiny little snippets of item descriptions, writing like a three-page creation myth, and then like a sequel that I never did anything with because it wasn't as good. Um, a sequel, if you can call it that. So anyway, so that was one thing. So then I was like, okay, I guess I'm writing. I can write, right? Um, can I? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, maybe I'll submit this to people and they'll say, oh my god, this is garbage. But well, only one way to find out, right? Uh, the other way in which I feel unqualified um, is that the book is a, it's like a, it's not, it's a genre I wouldn't even think that I would be interested in reading or writing. Um, it's a, and that's not 100% true. So it was based on a show that I don't want to give away because that would spoil both the show and the book because I might talk about the ending a little bit. 
I will, because the ending was perfect. <laughs> the, the, the ending was what inspired me to write. I saw this thing was like, wow, it was a slice of life. Um, I wouldn't quite say comedy, but there was a little, you know, they had fun moments because it's slice of life, funny things happen. Um, but like, it was essentially a drama. It was a romance. Um, and it was about teens and specifically gay teens, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never been, a, well, I've been a teen before, but never a, a gay girl. Um, and so I was like, how can I write about this? <laughs> like, like I've, I've, I've never read these kinds of books before. I, I like the slice of life shows. I do like that kind of stuff. Um, I can think of a few titles, but again, I don't want to, I don't know, potentially spoil things, but I'm sure I'll, I'll probably end up dropping names at some point in the future anyway. If you want to put together yourself, fine. Um, but anyway, so it was like, oh my gosh, how could I do this? How could I do this, right? I'm going to get everything wrong. I'm not qualified. Um, and I saw, there, and there, there was a, a couple things. So the, the main thing that really convinced me was like, okay, I think I can do this, um, was a talk with a game developer um, or, or writer, I'm not sure, but he worked on the game Gone Home. I think he was the main writer, but it was a small company, so maybe he had a lot of roles, whatever. Uh, and there was an interview with him, and he was talking about the exact same problem. Uh, I don't know if you've played Gone Home. If not, you totally should. It's like a three-ish, four-ish hour game. It's wonderful. It's about a gay girl coming out in the 90s, and it's full of 90s nostalgia that just made me, like, I don't know, it was too good. It's like, like VHSs with episodes of the X-Files recorded on it, right? Like, you can't get more... 90s in that um, and that was the time I grew up in right so so I really enjoyed that and then and the story was just it was wonderful it was a great story um, and if you want other games too like butterfly soup is also really good I know there's been at least another one anyway gone home so the interview with the guy he was like whoa I've never been a gay teen girl in the 90s uh, how can I possibly write write about this experience um, and he interviewed a, a bunch of people. He talked to people. I'm sure he had friends too. I mean, uh, other, I don't know. I just don't know how your politics, if you didn't have friends like that, would, would make you want to write such a, such a game. So I assume he also had lots of friends to rely on is what I'm getting at. I certainly do, um, to, to double check that what I'm saying makes any freaking sense. Um, so yeah, he just talked to people, listened to them, read about stuff, you know, experienced other things like that. Um, a friend recommended the movie Blue is the warmest color, which uh, not safe for work, let's say. Not that you should watch movies at work anyway, so maybe all movies are not safe for work. But that movie especially, I was very surprised. Also, it's a very long movie. Um, so yeah, you know, playing these games, talking to people, just approaching the topic respectfully. I don't know. I, and, uh, I don't know. Again, I, I, am I qualified fully? Probably not. But is it worthwhile for me to think about these things? Yeah, totally, right? I mean, everyone should be, regardless of who you are. Think about other people. Um, in their lives. So, um, so yeah, so I was like, okay, I can do that. And the third thing, having not really written, um, is I was able, I realized I could kind of fall back on game design uh, ideas. Um, so, like, there's this thing in game design called the flow channel, uh, and there's something else um, in movies. I think it's just an interest curve, but you have, and I need to, okay, the camera is backwards, right? Whatever. So, I'm going to try and draw this for you. Okay, finger over here. Wait, no, that's the wrong way. Over here, there we go, up, right? Okay, good, we're doing a graph. So, so here's zero, zero. All right, so as time goes on, ooh, this is really freaking, with, because I'm used to, you know, a mirror makes sense, even though it shouldn't. So as time goes on, the idea is uh, the player's skill is going to get better. So if, you, if you're graphing difficulty, if you don't make the game more difficult over time, eh. <laughs> I shouldn't even be trying to do this. This is too fucking hard. Should I not swear in my videos also? Who knows? I've already done it too late. We're not editing. Um, I'm not going to try and do that anymore. I'm sorry. That was a mess. Uh, lesson learned. Um, as, the, as the thing gets more difficult over time, if it doesn't get more difficult over time, the player's skill is going to improve, right? So if the player's skill improves, but the game doesn't become more difficult, then the game becomes boring. The difficulty the relative difficulty decreases, right? So you have to keep up with the growing skill of the player. Um, but you don't want to make your you don't want to ramp your difficulty so high that you know the player's just like oh this is, this is too hard I I give up you know rage quit whatever um, and the same thing applies in movies and the example I've always seen is with horror movies which I don't know whatever it's good enough I mean I'm not writing a horror right but the idea was you can't just have like a scary thing followed by a scarier thing followed by a scarier thing. Um, it's impossible as the writer to maintain that. Like, how do you, you right? You're going to hit a cap eventually. You can't get more grotesque or unnerving or whatever. There's kind of a limit before it gets silly. Um, and from the viewer's point of view, 
either you can successfully do that and you just tire them out or freak them out or it's a stressful movie or probably they're just going to go like get desensitized and be like this is silly there's you know whatever um or if you don't do it well then yeah it just becomes silly and you're like what are they even thinking they made this bananas thing so anyway the point is both with an interest curve and with a fl and with a flow channel i don't know if that would let's say difficulty curve because the flow channel is in the name of the part of the chart but whatever um the idea is to, to escalate but, but have breaks. I'm going to try and do this again even though I said I wouldn't. So you want it to be like, oh, we got more difficult or more intense horror, let's say, let's say scarier. I'll just keep using that example. So more difficult game, more enemies or, or yeah, or the blood and the gore. Oh, we have a thing. But then you take a little break. So you're like, um, and in the case of difficulty, you'd say, okay, let's like lighten up on the enemies. Um, and just let them like blow blow shit up, you know. I've already swore. I already said a, a worse swear word, right? So let's just, let's just keep up, right? So yeah, just blow shit up, have fun. Um, okay, okay. Now now we're kind of chill. Um, okay, now we're gonna have a scarier moment, or even more. Or the boss comes, you know. Oh, that's scarier. It's like oh, but but you you figured out. Oh, you can do it. Oh yeah, you just oh yeah, you just kick its ass. It's great. Or 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 in the movie, maybe I should go back to a movie example. You know, it's like oh, you have a chill moment where maybe people are, are talking. A friend got murderated by the stabby guy or whatever and then they're just like oh he got killed it was crazy but then they're like okay guys we're gonna you know we're gonna we're gonna regroup and, and get all supplies oh you have a flashlight you know whatever you, you have the moments in between you don't just do constant horror non-stop so i was like okay again i learned that principle in game design i saw it also in like movies there's some fun charts of like uh star wars episode four a new hope that shows that similar thing it's like oh the, the rebels are being chased oh okay we're learning about luke um you know, oh, the, the, the Jawas have taken the androids, oh, they're buying the androids now, whatever. And you can see a similar kind of curve. Use the force, Luke, I think is kind of the, the, the peak. And then you have the, um, should I have done that on the side screen? The peak, use the force, Luke. And then you have the conclusion, they all get the, the awards, yay. Right. Um, so anyway, I was like, okay, I can put my story. Um, I'm basing it on an existing work, as mentioned. So I, like, I didn't want to copy it 100%. That would just be no fun, and who wants to read that anyway, or, or whatever. Um, so, anyway, but I, I took inspiration. I was like, okay, this is going to be a high moment. You know, the two characters discover a thing. And then that was, that was actually really useful, because I went through this, and like, okay, I need a high point, and then a low point, and then a high point, and then a low point. But I only have, like, two high points in my mind. So it was useful to have that chart and be like, well, if it's going to be of any significant length, I'm going to need five or six high points, what will those high points be? So I invented some things and the characters that would allow for those things to exist. Like, I don't know, let's spoil a thing. Um, it is a vaguely, I say vaguely sci-fi setting. It is a sci-fi setting, um, but that's not the point. Um, there aren't aliens, like, yeah, they're not on Earth, they're on a space station, um, but who cares? It's not really about that, it's about the people. But some of the events have a little, you know, sci-fi twinge to them. So one of them is he, uh, one of the kids, uh, the students, or maybe they're not really students. It's, there's not really a school setting. It's a it's a colony, so it's more like everyone's at work. Um, but but anyway, so one of the kids is like, oh yeah, I'm doing communications-y stuff. And here's a cat again, by the way. I wonder if she'll show her face. Mia, look over here. You gotta get a little higher. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh well. Um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So so one of the kids finds a um, a signal. It's like, oh, it could be a signal intercepted of like, oh, it looks like maybe the captain of the station is is cheating. He's got like you know, a, a sexy time signal from Earth, basically, right? It's like like some sort of scandalous video, and they're like, whoa, right? So so that's like one moment. It's like, okay, here's another... Because I didn't want it all about the um, just the relationship with the people. It's like, what are the relationships with other people going on on, on, on the ship? So um, they see this recording of, of the captain that makes them think that, oh, maybe he's cheating, right? And that's a discovery. I'm like, oh, what do we do? Do we do we, do we we tell anyone about this, or, or do we not? Um, moving the cat again. Uh, so, so anyway, so filling in that um, interest curve, sorry, let's go the right direction on the camera, even though I promised I wouldn't do that anymore and that I'd learned my lesson, apparently I haven't. Uh, but yeah, filling in those, those points of, here's a high point, okay, they can, you know, chill out, here's, here's a point, okay, they, here's a point, um, leading up to the end, which, sorry, and the cat is causing the camera to shake too, which is probably going to make you nauseous or something. Uh, maybe in the future I'll find a better place. I just set up this folding table here because the view of the other side of this room is much less interesting. My wall is embarrassingly bare. This wall has paintings, uh, not paint, uh, digital paintings. Um, and what's uh, this? Oh, the tail is blocking. Uh, this is um, not related. I printed that off myself. It's kind of cheating. Um, Princess Remedy in a World of Hurt? Yes, that's a great game. Play it. Um, it has nothing to do with anything we're talking about. It's just a delightful little game. I think it might be about relationships. I don't want to guarantee that. It's been a long time, time since I played. Um, 
I hit my microphone. I hope that didn't make a terrible noise. So anyway, so that, that's all I really wanted to talk about, I think. It was like, wow, I'm not qualified. I've never written before. How do you write? Where's my writing experience? Right? How do you structure a book? I'm writing about people that I've never been. How the hell am I going to do this? Um, and I've convinced myself, for good or bad, that I can. Uh, for, for good or ill, I, whatever. Um, that this is a thing I can and should do. Um, I don't know. It's a kind of story I love. I'm envious of people who, who write these kinds of stories. Um, I have a lot of friends who are... LGBT somewhere, fall somewhere on that spectrum. Um, and the, the, just the culture there is great. Um, I don't know, I hesitate to call myself an ally because I am a straight white dude, right? Um, but again, the politics online or something, I don't know. So um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. So it's always a topic I, I feel a little awkward um, talking about. So, um, but, but anyway, so I'm writing this book and, and, and maybe that will be, you know, if you wanna write a thing fall back on other skills, read about stuff, if it's a thing you like, right? Um, other stories you've seen, again, like I make games and they never have cool stories like this. Like I played Gone Home and I was just like, this is mind blowing, I wish I could do this. I just can't imagine a story like this. Um, and then somehow I watched this thing, sorry, I was motioning to my TV that you can't see. I was thinking about moving the cat. She's in an interesting pose. Um, I don't know, just try it out, um, write a thing. Use, use cooking. If you're an expert at cooking, say, I'm going to use what I know from cooking and structure a book on that. Will that work? I don't know. But, you know, if it can work from game design principles, why not from other things? I, I don't know. There's some parallels that are going to work less well or more well than others. Maybe game design will prove to work not very well. Again, only one way to find out. Um, and somehow I've kept on this. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. This video is already way too long, 21 minutes and 46 seconds, 47 seconds, that's too long. Uh, I'll try to keep the others shorter. Um, again, I don't know exactly what I'll talk about, um, but I, I'm not really expecting many people to like post comments on this because it's the first video and I don't have, no one really watches my videos, right? Why would they? I don't post a lot. Um, and most of the content is very technical or, or very specific to, to some particular thing. Sorry, the cat's causing camera chaos again. Cat causing camera chaos. There she goes. Uh, so anyway, I'll just probably, no one's going to have ideas is what I'm getting at for what I should say next thing. So I'll just find something and, but, you know, as people watch, if they have ideas, I'll keep reminding, um, post them in the thing and uh, I'll, I'll, you know, look at them, think about them, see if there's anything cool there to talk about. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, until next week, I guess.